Welcome to Q&A, Social Security Disability Today. This program is brought to you by the Reeves Law Firm, representing you and your Social Security and Disability needs. If you have a problem or questions regarding Social Security and Disability, call attorney Anthony Reeves. Here's your host, attorney Anthony Reeves. I cannot tell you how many times I've had people ask me this magical question. Why won't a representative just help me do my case for myself? Sorry about that. Got a little distracted. They'll say, why won't a representative just help me do my case for me? Just, just give me some tips. And then I have to share with them the hard truth. And I talked about this in a video a couple of videos back. Attorneys are business people. You know, I want you to wrap your brain around this concept. Imagine going to a mechanic. Somebody who works at an auto dealership or, or just a regular mechanic place and you tell them, oh, I don't want you to fix my car. What I want you to do is I want you to help me figure out what the problem is. And then I want you to tell me what I need to do to fix it on my own. And I'm like, I'm gonna wrap your brain on what you just said. This is what the person does for a living. So you want them on their own time to help you identify a problem on your case with your car on their own time. And then on their own time. With no expense, no nothing, no getting, not getting paid at all. You want them to help you, more or less, teach you how to effectively correct the problem on your car. Now, this ain't nothing. This ain't no oil change. This is a situation where you sat there and your car has a major problem, which requires someone with an expertise to actually physically do the work. And instead of paying that individual, you would rather that person tell you what you need to know. Now, mind you. All kind of issues could be going on, but they don't. But you don't want that because in your mind, you've decided that the expert that you're talking to, the mechanic, should be able to troubleshoot the problem very quickly, get you right to the answer so that you can fix the problem right away. And I tell people a million times that is the greatest level of disrespect that you could ever do someone. Imagine you wouldn't want that done to you. Same thing. It's like going to a doctor's office. I'm sick, but I don't want to pay for you. I don't pay the copay and so forth. Um, these are the symptoms I have. I need you to tell me what I need to do to make myself feel better. Well, the doctor's not going to be able to do that. The doctor doesn't know exactly if he had to take your temperature, had to take your vitals, doesn't know what your history is. And you just want him to basically, or you want her to pull something out of her thigh to figure out what your problem is so that you don't have to. This is what I tell people when people come to me and ask the question about helping them. I always tell them this. This is the hardcore fact. The reality is you don't value a representative services enough to pay for it. And this is, and people think I'm harsh when I say this. I said, the simple fact of the matter is, is that if you go to the socialsecurity.gov website or you contact your local office, there's a multitude of resources there that can help you guide you along the way. The reality is, is that if you're not sure, or if there's some things that you have questions about, if you, if you can't get them to give you the guidance that you need, meaning the social security administration, you have a choice, research it on your own or hire somebody to do it. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, okay, this is what's going on. And I've, and I've had to politely tell a few people when they've sat there and say, Tony Reeves, I have A, B, C, D, is anything wrong with me? Should, will I get disability benefits? I'm like, I don't know because I don't know what your medical records look like. You, diagnosis tell me nothing. And they get an attitude and I've had to politely explain to them that a diagnosis, I said, if you come to me and you say, I have hypertension, I'm going to tell you that tells me nothing. If you tell me that you have hypertension is so high that they can't get the medications on, under control and that you've been in the hospital uh, on the average of two or three times per month because of how high it is and that they've actually had to put IVs in you to help you get your blood pressure down and you can show that to me, then I can tell you what you've got there with your case. Then I'm going to ask you where's your case located. I'm going to ask you who's the judge. I'm going to ask you how many times have you applied in terms of um, is this, what level of appeal is this. See how many, see how that one simple question is, I have high blood pressure. How, what do you think my chances are? That one question tells me nothing. But as the scope of information increases, it tells me a lot. Then I can give you a better picture. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that a lot of times people, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but you know, I've been doing these for a number of years and you guys know I'm blunt. A lot of times people want something for nothing. And I'm always fascinated because, and I told a couple of people this, I said, you do realize 
that for the in the grander scheme of things, Social Security work is probably the most from a from an attorney standpoint, probably the cheapest area that you're going to find. And you say, well, why? Well, one, we work on contingency fees. Most contingency fee practices have kind of an escalating price depending on where you're at. Um, thirty three you know, thirty three percent if it's before you file suit, forty percent if you file suit from regular civil actions. If you're in workers' comp, it may be like you know twenty five percent for the first 10, 5 percent for this. So security is a flat twenty five percent or six thousand. If you go up to the hearing and then beyond that, it's twenty five percent, and you have to get wait a long time to get to that full twenty five percent. And I still have people who, in their mind, when they're dealing with representatives, they have told themselves that they've put a value on their case and they're trying to keep as much money for themselves as possible. So they would rather not pay that representative, but they still want the benefit of that representative's feedback and knowledge. So I tell when people come to me and they say, why can't I find someone to help me? Why can't I find a representative who will just basically walk me through the process? I'm going to ask that same person, put yourself in a position of when you used to do a job and say you had... Remember the last job you had? What if somebody told you they wanted your expertise to do the job? What if you went to your job and your job said, oh, this is what the deal is. I want you to teach my this person how to do the work, but I'm not going to pay you anymore. You're going to be here eight hours a day, but you're only going to be here just to show that person your expertise so that um, they can do it on their own. You wouldn't do that, would you? No. Then why would you ask a representative to do the same for you? And don't give me that noise about how, oh, I don't, we don't have any money. I'm really, I need a little bit. I said, because you do realize, this is the thing that I always remind people when people come to me with this. When a representative takes your case, they're doing it for nothing because they're not, there's no guarantee they'll get paid. You could lose and decide to give up. They would have spent all that time. Trust. I had a case where I was in a case for three years. And the, at the very end of the day, the woman gave up. There was nothing I could do about it. I wasn't able to help her get the, the money that she needed because she had just gotten so frustrated with the process, even though I told her to hang in there, she gave up. Three years of work, I couldn't charge her a dime. So when people come to me and they start talking that hee-haw about, oh, no, no, I always like to politely remind them, there's no guarantee of anything. So just keep this in mind because this is something that's very close to my heart. Before you decide to ask a representative to basically give you help for nothing, remember this. This is what they do for a living. You're disabled, so you're struggling trying to, to survive. They're trying to represent people like you. Don't do anything to help them. Don't do anything to hurt their ability to survive as well.